on this episode of Carolina All Out. We are trapping these beavers because there's a landowner that wants it gone. Destroying the timber. He wants it back normal. Perfect place to be under that log right there, Chris. Maybe he'd be there in the morning. Might just be here in the morning. Yep. I see a tail right there. North Carolina beaver. Oh, look at that. Pitt County beavers. This is Carolina All Out. <laughs> This week, the All Out crew was headed to Pitt County to meet up with friend and fellow trapper Bobby Pollard, who's got a little beaver problem to take care of. It's late winter and beavers have settled into a creek bottom and are causing major problems by backing water up into a nearby soybean field and threatening to cause water to spill out of the creek banks and over the highway. Bobby is contracted with the landowner to remove the offending rodents so the creek can return to normal and the timber, highway, and future crops can be saved. We're here with Bobby Pollard, who has trapped this area extensively here in Pitt County. And Bobby, what we're standing in doesn't really look normal. It's not. It's not. The water should be over in the creek. It's a, little, it's a creek, Kitten Creek. Runs right down here about 15, 20 yards from us. So this has all come from the beavers? The beavers. Nothing but the beavers. Yes, sir. So in this situation, we know that beavers are detrimental on timber because they flood the water back into the timber and kill it, and they eat it, and they utilize it to make their dams. Right. But also in the agriculture side of things, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They'll go out in a bean field or a corn field and cut the soybeans, cut the corn, and carry it back to the dam. You'll see trails probably going from the water to the agriculture fields, and it's strictly for food. That's it. So in this particular instance, we are trapping these beavers because there's a landowner that wants it Destro gone. Destroy the timber. He wants it back to Kitten Creek, not a beaver pond. There's probably 25 acres here of timber underwater that normally shouldn't be underwater. Now, yep. I see there's a lodge back there. That's Is right. that what you start with when if, you first start? If this? I can get to that lodge, I'll set it. If I cannot get to it, I'll start downstream at the lowest dam and work my way back. And I continue to drop the water level back up to the lodge so I can set the lodge. The lodge normally is gonna be the deepest hole in the beaver pond. Well, I guess now that we've established where this thing is, we need to go on downstream. We'll go, down, go downstream to the, find the last dam and start working back this away. All right, lead Let's the go. way. Looks like a good place to put one right here, Chris. Let's cross yeah, over. Yeah, I can see that run right there. Yep. All right, well, show me how you would set this one up. This is really cool here with the water falling. All that water, you can see from right here yep. how, I mean, that's a whole lot of water. That's at it's least four foot. four foot of water backed up all the way up to the highway up there. Man. You just want to hope this dam don't break while we're standing here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Okay, so you set I'm your... set a 3.30 right here, but now in North Carolina, a 3.30 has got to be half submerged. Okay. So now I'm hoping the water's going to be deep enough right here on the back side that I can submerge my trap legally. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Locks are off. Locks are off. Now you stabilization. Anchor it down. That's her. So he's going to come down off of that, slide right through here. Right through here, right through the trap. Right through the trap. Got it. Got it. How about that? Don't go away. There's more Carolina All Out coming up.
Carolina All Out is brought to you by the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission. Go hunt, go fish, go wild. Agri Supply, more than just a farm store. Carolina Cooker Cast Iron Cookware, a tradition born in the South. Montgomery Community College, educating since 1967. Farms and Land Realty, selling land is what we do. And by the Dixie Deer Classic, the South's premier sportsman event. Don't go away, there's more Carolina All Out coming up. Hi, I'm Josh Leventhal, editor of Wildlife in North Carolina Magazine, and today I'm here to talk to you about how we make each issue of our historic, award-winning magazine. To create an award-winning magazine like this, the first thing we need, of course, is content. So we begin our process a year in advance. Staff brainstorm ideas that we think would be interesting to our readers and make up an editorial calendar for the year. We then work with our photographer to lay out the concept of where and when the photo shoot will take place, who we'll be working with, and how we want to highlight the message of the story. Next step is for the story to be edited and reviewed so it reads well and fits within the limited page counter space restrictions. Then it is passed on to our talented design team who are responsible for making each issue of the magazine so visually appealing and attractive by laying out the page and adding photos and some graphics. Our draft of the magazine is then printed and hung up on a pinup board to allow staff to come through and read the articles to make sure everything looks good. Only after extensive review sessions do we send it off to our North Carolina-based printer to print, bind, and ship our magazine off to you, our subscribers. This magazine is perfect for anyone who enjoys being in the outdoors, whether you hunt, fish, hike, birdwatch, or interested in general conservation issues, this magazine is for you. So don't miss out. Visit ncwildlife.org for more information and to learn how to subscribe to Wildlife in North Carolina Magazine. Here's what beavers do right here now. <laughs> this is a prime example. Oh man, look at this. Look at this stump here where they've worked this thing up. I mean, chewed it. I mean, that was a good eight, yeah. eight inch or more tree. And, and of course I see it here and I see one over there that they've cut down. So this fell and, and they, they- They've topped them. Yep, and I they, see that. They carry the tops away. The tops could be in the lodge or it could be in the dam. And they've come back and eat the bark off of them and started cutting them up in sections, sections so they can get it to the water. Once they get it to the water, they can float it where they want to carry it to. But on the dry land, they have a hard time moving it with, in big pieces because it's so heavy. Right, but they are powerful creatures. Oh, they're powerful creatures. But, I mean, they've spent quite a bit of time oh, here. Yeah. You can see where it's, now I gotta assume that this is probably a good place maybe to set a, set a trap, yep, possibly. Good, possibly. Yeah. Like some fresh sand right here, Chris. Oh yeah, I can see it. So they're not doing denning in the classic lodge type this, where they no, built it. Like, like the lodge, no, just beavers right here too, uh, uh, living up in the bank. Up in the bank. Up in the bank. Above yep. the water line. Okay. Haven't been dug out long. I mean, you can tell it's, it's the fresh, how fresh it is. Okay, well, how do we set this up? We're going to put this right there directly in front of the hole. She's live now. She's live now. Yep. We're going to put it all the way down. We need a stabilizing bar. In the anchor bar. All right. Well, let's get out of here and let yep. it do its work. Trapping, and especially trapping beavers, played an integral part of the expansion of the U.S. and Canada. The desires for furs in Europe created an ever-increasing demand. Fur companies sprang up and employed the adventurous men who were constantly in search of untapped ground where game was plentiful. This pushed them further into the North American frontier to find new areas rich in game. The men built outposts, which later became important points for trade, leading to the creation of towns and infrastructure that can all attribute their existence to nature's little engineers. Chris, I've got another crossover right here. Yeah. We can set a, a 330 under this log right here with it coming down under the log. Okay, yeah, I can this, see the run coming right yeah, there off the right dam. There. 
And this is, the, this is the last dam before we get to the lodge, so I'm pretty sure once I start tearing dams out down the stream, this this be a hot trail right here. Right, right. You want to try to set this one? Yeah, I'd love to try to set it. Okay, on the outside, take my dog. Clip this right in there. That one's off. That one's off. Okay, she's ready. She's Put these ready. up a little bit. A little bit, yep. Okay. And I was sitting directly on that log right there in that room. Okay. So we're gonna get it right down here. Okay. Oh yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Now, Stabilizing bar. Stabilizing bar. We're gonna go between the two. Between the jaws. And jaws. Between the spring. All right. Okay, yeah, there we go. That one goes right. in there. That's good. All right, now your ankle bar. Yep. I'm making sure we're staying away from those jaws. Right out here somewhere, fine. Okay. We need to fence this here in somehow or another to make sure they stay in that trail right, right there. Because there's space over there they can yep. get by. There's space there. they can get by here. So what we do, we take sticks and we'll stick them right, right in the ground. It's going to force him to go in this trap. Got it. That was easy enough, but I can see the danger in it. <laughs> for sure, because I sure wouldn't want to no. be in a no. remote place with my hand no. caught in a, you hear about yourself, in a conibear. And then your hand that 330 conibear, you will carry yeah. it home unless yeah. somebody comes here to help you. Yeah, exactly. All right, we'll get out of here and we'll let this thing do its work. Okay. Bobby, we have a run coming out of the water here and going up into the field. Yep. And they obviously were pulling. One of the trails that are bringing the soybeans back here to, to the beaver pond, exactly. So on this set, what are, what are we looking at? What are we doing? What do we call I'm this? I'm going to set a MB750 on a drowning wire. I have a cement block thrown out here in the deep water. When he slides down the wire and tries to come back, he can't, it'll lock. It locks, gotcha. So when, once he slides out, there's no way to come back. Yep. Okay, so show us how this thing sets okay. up. Take your draining wire down. Then we'll set the trap. And you want that to be pretty solid yeah, pretty right solid. in there? It's bedded, bedded solid, so it can't tilt and sway either way. But now, Chris, the only thing left is to throw the cement block out for the draining wire. All right. I you, might want, you might want to move because you're going to get wet. <laughs> Make a big splash. All right, I'll hang right here. <laughs> All right, so and that's that, set. Now your draining wire is tight. If he gets in it, he'll slide out there, and in the morning he'll be out there, hopefully, when we get back. Okay. All right, so that basically concludes all the setups. That we can possibly do today. We can't get to the lodge, exactly. Okay, and so we wait. In the we morning, start, we'll come back and check them in the morning. And we tear down another? Tear a dam out and check traps as we go and see how the water level is at the lodge and we'll go from there. Okay, all right. Well, let's see what we come up with. That's right. Carolina All Out is brought to you by the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission. Go hunt, go fish, Go wild. Agri Supply, more than just a farm store. Carolina Cooker Cast Iron Cookware, a tradition born in the South. Montgomery Community College, educating since 1967. Farms and Land Realty, selling land is what we do. And by Browning Trail Cameras, faster, smaller, better. Don't go away, there's more Carolina All Out coming up. Well, as you can see, we're still in waders, but we got more clothes on. It's a few days after we've set these traps. So, Bobby, there's a law that we have to check the on. The conibear traps every 72 hours have been gone, so you get to visit them every 72 hours. Okay. Maximum you can wait. 
And so we are at yep. that mark now. We, this is our second day, so we're at the 48 hour mark. Right. Okay. All right. Yep. So anytime checking them, there's no problem checking oh, them no. before then. No, no but you're so confident, and we were so confident after oh, yeah. putting them on those places, they were so good. We're going to have some fur. We're going to have some beavers. Well, let's go do it. You let's show me the way. All right. Something's tripping. Yeah, this is his trip. Yeah. I see a tail right there. Oh, yeah. You got a, a flat tail here. Oh, yeah. Yep. You got a, looks like you got a beaver. Yep. Old flat tail. <laughs> Coming down the slide just like you thought. Uh, oh, look at that. Had him by both jaws. I mean, he he was <laughs> caught. That didn't last long at all. No. Like he's ready he for the grill. He don't even know what hit him. that side there. Was... He doesn't even know what hit him. Yeah, that one got him good. Right behind the head. So, Bobby, this beaver isn't he's a not super, full grown. A no, super he's, big. No, no. He's about a small medium. Small to medium. Yep. Now the teeth on him are unbelievable, huh? Those are the things that absolutely are Destroy your timber. All, destroying all this stuff yep. here. This was the animal that basically brought us all here. I mean, oh, really, yeah. it, was, oh, yeah. it, was, yep. it was quite the historical animal. The fur was something else that was covered in over in Europe and places. Now it's not worth much, but we have to still do this because, <laughs> because of the, the, the loss of, loss of timber. timber. The landowners are losing money every day, every day because and crops. of and crops because of him. Yep. All right. Well, I'll I'll help drag this one out. All right. Let's, let's, we got some more to check a little further up. Let's go see what else we have. Okay. All right. All right. I'm right there behind you. Bobby, I remember this place. Yep. These chewed up logs here, and then there was a hole. Right that between we them. Yeah, right between them that we come somewhere underneath here because we could see all that sand pushed out yep. there. Does it look like it's been it's, tripped? The stabilizing bars don't like it straight. Oh, yeah, I see that. What have we got? A nutria. A nutria. This is an invasive species. He's a big rat. He is a big rat, isn't he? And he ain't got, his teeth aren't any joke either, are no. they? Oh my goodness. You couldn't do this if you didn't have those No, it's, it, it, back in the day I might could, but now I'd rather have these and be safe. Oh yeah. Yep, them, them 330 kind of That's yeah, a powerful that's a, thing. That's a tough, tough trip right there, I'll tell you that. Yes it is, it is. Yep. Well, that is a nutria who is not native to North Carolina, but they are here in pretty big numbers. Yep. You know, you set these things knowing that you could come up with a muskrat, a beaver, or a nutria. They yep. all are inhabiting yep. the same place. Same place. So, you know, you come up with these things and uh, and we're not doing any harm to the environment by taking one of these guys. I'm gonna set him right here on the ground and, and that, so we've got a Beaver now, we've got a nutria, and we've got a few more traps oh, yeah, we to got, check. We're gonna set this one here back right here. Okay. And we'll go check the rest of them out. All right. Hey everybody, welcome back to Appetite for the Outdoors. I'm Chef Chad McIntyre. And today we're gonna to be doing a nice chicken and chorizo kind of paella. We're gonna be doing it today on the discada and 32 inch discada stand from Carolina Cooker. This gives us a nice good surface to work with. We're gonna start off with about, about a quarter cups worth of olive oil, get this hot. One onion, large white diced, a tablespoon of chopped garlic. So over about a medium heat, you wanna caramelize the onions and the garlic. We're gonna go ahead and put our chicken in, start skin side down, season the underside of the chicken, a little salt and pepper. So while the chicken's cooking too, we're gonna go ahead and add our chorizo in. So next we have about a tablespoon of cumin and a tablespoon of coriander. We're gonna kinda of season everything. 
Want to make sure you keep stirring it so you don't burn anything under the chicken. Next, we're going to add in about two and a half cups of a long grain rice with a pre-seasoned turmeric in it. And we're going to go ahead and kind of toss this all up. We want it to get some of the flavor from the chorizo and the onions all mixed in with the rice. We're going to go ahead and put in some chicken stock. And so we're borrowing a lid from our eight gallon stew pot series from Carolina Cooker to help kind of steam everything in. We're gonna give this about a good 15 to 20 minutes until the chicken's all the way cooked. We're gonna go ahead and put in about one bell pepper diced up, dress it off with some fresh green onions, and there you have it. So as always, it's great to take wild game in the outdoors, but it's even better when you can incorporate it into a meal. Chris, this is the one you set. Oh yeah, hey. You can catch a beaver. Success. This is outstanding. I mean, a critter like this, a critter like this lives and dies right here. And they're amazing, they really are. I have to give them the respect that they're due because they are really, really can engineer something. But unfortunately. It's just amazing how much timber dollar amount do value that they can destroy. Yeah, in a very short period short of time. Short period of time. Yep. North Carolina beaver. <laughs> well, Chris, this is the drowning set, and I see the trap is gone. Oh so yeah, it is we, gone. We're gonna have to get out here and try to find the drowning wire. I got it right here. All right. Give me a hand there. Uh-oh. Uh oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Just like we wanted it to work, right by his back foot. Me and my team put it down deep, catch yep. it by his back leg. Oh, that's a big old beaver, too. Look at that. Watch that wire, don't let it hit you. And there he is. Another North Carolina Pitt County, Pitt County beaver. <laughs> Big old critter, look at him teeth. <laughs> look at the teeth, huh? And those things will gnaw the wood and destroy acres, acres, and acres, and acres, acres of, of it. timber. Even though the prices are down on these furs, what you guys are doing is still helping the landowner in both timber and crops in this particular case. So that's pretty amazing. Thank yep. you so much yes, for sir. the time. Anytime, anytime. Enjoyed working with you. Well, it was great. Yep. It really was. If you want to go trapping yourself, I would advise you to get with an experienced trapper like Bobby Pollard to show you because these sets are not safe always. You can get into trouble out here in the water. This has been great trapping beaver in Pitt County. I'm Chris Douglas signing off for Carolina All Out. And remember, our state is your next adventure. Awesome. Daisy.